Hello, this video is about um, the showing of the features of this asteroid system. It's essentially a dynamic asteroid system that is generating procedurally the texturing, the details and tessellation for an asteroid. So essentially what we have here is a whole set of settings that allows us to generate things. Um, first of all, this thing is using tessellation. So this tessellation multiplier that I'm editing now is, as you can see, influencing the amount of tessellation stuff that's happening there. If I put it to zero, I basically see the mesh as it is. If I put it onto a higher value, let's say one, I can see already that the shape is slightly changing. So now it's uh, increased the basically offset value to a high value. You can see even more that it's happening. One thing is, since it's tessellation that's going on here, you see some jagged edges. Those are the result of the uh, tessellation multiplier. If I change that to a higher value, they essentially vanish. So um, it's essential when, when using this to keep those two factors in mind, because both of them influence how this thing in the end looks. So if I'm now, for example, flying in here, just to give you a close up of the mesh detail itself, you can see that there are lots and lots of yeah, detailed microstructure structures with that which are generated on the surface. There's a detailed texturing going on on this uh, asteroid. And essentially what we have here is also the full control over the texture distribution and their scale. So if I'm changing the values here, you can see that you can by hand alter how the textures are scaled. So if you have a close-up scene and re need really, really lots of details, just ramp up the UVs and basically tile the textures more. If you're further away and just need this as a background thing, you can use the different value. It's all up to you as a user to essentially go ahead and, and assign those values. As you can see, there's not um, these values are not globally influenced in everything, and that's because this thing is a layer-based system. Layer-based system means we have different layers where different things get blended in. If I'm now changing the color here just to show you, this, for example, is the first layer, and I'm controlling the first layer with this value. So you can see, if I'm changing that, I'm just changing this part of it. And I can also have control over the distribution of those layers. So what I can do is I can tell the system where which layer should show up. Let's say if I'm changing that to value, you can see that there's more of the now um, pink colored stuff coming in. To illustrate that further, I'm just adding one more color in and uh, showing you where this is then showing up later on. So that's basically the second layer, and that is now the third layer. And as you can see, um, you don't deal with one set of UVs, you deal with multiple sets of UVs, which are then used to determine the distribution of all those elements. And you have the full control in the blueprint over that. So essentially you can go in and define all things and where things should be happening in here. So now you see I've just removed this, and if I try to put it to this value, it even uh, goes further. So this is a really, really versatile system that allows you to do lots and lots of different things with just one single blueprint that you drop into the scene. Um, let me just zoom out a bit in order to show you what this thing is actually good for. So essentially, let's say you're making a space scene. You, you want to have asteroids there. Then you want to have an asteroid field. So you just put this thing on random and uh, make a few copies and it will generate you essentially nearly an infinite amount of different asteroids in different places that you can yeah, put wherever you want to. So, as you can see, I can just go ahead and create more of those asteroids, move them to different uh, locations, and it randomly generates them to me. So, if now let's see, let's change things, and it generates, well, them more or less automatically, but you have the full control over that. So if you don't want to have random stuff, you just switch those thing of things off and basically select the asteroid that you like to have. And the thing is, I've got here 15, uh, 16 texture slots, so you can just switch through them and essentially see the different asteroid texture presets that are available. And each of them is using a different set for those basic things. and you can also build your own by just altering those values here. You can load your own textures, you can use my textures, you can do all sorts of things in order to have fun with the system. I designed this system when I was working on a tiny space game in order to make huge asteroid fields without actually building tons and tons of different asteroids. So 
um, if I'm setting that value back to zero, it's a texture preset zero, and you can have a look at different asteroid shapes, for example, this one. Well, if you want something that bends in and looks kind of hollow. And what we can do now is we can also have a look at this value, because we have, have put that on random. Of course, if you put it to extreme values, it just looks silly. But um, if you put it to reasonable values, it allows you to basically have a huge variety of asteroids that uh, vary not in all aspects, but just a few, like for example now the tessellation offset. This other thing that I wanted to show you is you have full control over the specular and over the metallic values. So it's up to you if it's a rock of ice or if it's essentially um, crystal or whatever structure you need. So it's not like that is, uh, is defined by me. You can go in here and tweak those settings for your scene so that the thing looks perfect for what for your scene we want to use that. And um, the other things that you can of course do, you can um, blend in and out the detail texturing. You can essentially make this go away or you can go ahead and put more details in if you bring that back up to one. You see there's a really tiny noise that we're loading in here and put it to some values in between. So everything that I built here is basically a tool that allows you to use those standard asteroid shapes, 16, st uh, 16 uh, this entire number of shapes that I did, in order to do whatever you want with them in regards to a space scene. So well, let's have a look at this one. Yes, well, and the idea is you can just move it around and have a copy of this thing going on. Now I just leave the background so you can see that without stars and uh, sky, and that essentially is what this thing is about. So it's, in my opinion, a rather useful thing to have.